Everybody loves a hard worker, okay? Right, and not only, and let me take it a step further. Not only does everyone love a hard worker, which what that's what makes you different. Oh, Ricky, everybody can work hard. Yeah, no, everybody can say that they work hard. Very few people actually work hard. What I'm saying is, is working hard when nobody's looking. In this world of you know just real estate sales, okay, and then you and then you add this component of you know the the building the teams and even if you build other businesses, you know stocks investing, you know the the, the whole nine yards all comes down to uh, compounding and accumulation, right? So so like for example, you know I can tell you exactly where you're going to be three to five years from now, based on what you do day to day right now. Well, here's the thing. I don't know where someone's gonna be this year. Like, if you tell me what you're doing, I, I don't know where that's gonna get you in the next 12 months. But I know for a fact, I can tell you exactly where you're gonna be five years from now. Like, like the long term is so easy to predict. This is a game of accumulation, okay? So what I mean is, is like when you meet people and you put them in your database, they never need to forget who you are ever okay so when you meet them and you're like i've just met you and i'm like wow this is a very bubbly not great personality hard worker has her stuff together that's the impression you're making to these people and they love it okay now now if you don't take that great moment and great first impression that you just made on them and then continue that relationship and continue touching them in a way where they never forget about you they're going to eventually kind of start to forget about you yeah. and and they could drift away from you now what you have to do listen this is the way i do it guys my goal is to reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry okay that's why i coach for free i don't have a boot camp that people pay for i don't have a course that you're going to buy i'm trying to influence the entire industry not just people that are willing to pay me for something. I want to touch everybody and reduce the failure rate in the industry. And the only way that I can do that is by just sharing what has worked for me. Not to say that I'm the God of this stuff or that this is the only way to do it. I can just share with you my thoughts and hopefully you pick something up. When I look at follow up and building personal brand and staying in touch with our clients, I've went through all the different avenues and I've found the simplest way to do it. Okay a weekly email to my entire database. Now, why? Well, the biggest reason is that it has a 90% organic reach, which means 90% of the people in your database are gonna see that email at least in their inbox. Social media, we're looking at five, you know, two, three, four percent organic reach. We're a data collector first. Because when we meet these people and make these great first impressions and, and create these friendships, we, ha we need their data to continue to build our personal brands with them forever. So when we make these great first impressions without expecting anything, they love us now. Now we do a weekly email on the same day of the week forever. And now through the email, they realize, wow, this person's consistent, dependable, hardworking, professional, honest, everything that I want in an agent. That's what the email does. It proves to them that you are who you say you are and that you're here to stay. You're not going anywhere. You're creating a machine, right? Because you're spending 30 minutes a week on this email, but it doesn't matter if there's five people, 50 people, 500, 5,000, 50,000. It still only takes you 30 minutes every week. So now what is that called? Scale a bill a T. Now you can scale your business to the moon. And now it becomes a game of accumulation accumulating how many friends can we make how much data can we collect to put into our database to get this weekly email to let them know who we really are to then do business with them now or later or whatever um, so if anybody can tell me this is the question out of all the lead generation sources okay because people are spending so much money just not to have to call someone just to turn around and call someone when you get a zillow lead the first thing you gotta do is call them facebook lead you gotta call them you do an open house you develop a list of people that came the next day call them it all comes back to calling people so in my opinion with me being the beast that i am i'm like well I'm not gonna do any of that stuff. I'm just gonna call people because that's the end result anyway. So if someone can tell me instead of doing all the stuff people spend all this time, money, and energy on, 
just to turn in a call people, why not just pick the exact property owners you want to do business with, which are unlimited by the way. You can never call every single property owner in your market ever. Never happened. Why not pick the exact property owners you want to do business with, get their contact information for two cents a piece, call them just to make friends, followed by a weekly email on the same day of the week forever. Boom. If somebody can tell me a better strategy than that, and look, if you want to sprinkle social media on top of this, make this your foundation. If you want to do other things, do other things, but sprinkle it on top of this. Make this be the core, the core of your business. Back then, I saw the writing on the wall, inventory low, pent up demand building, the economy opens back up, boom. Now I'm seeing pent up demand of sellers, seller pent up demand, people who want to sell but can't. There's nothing to buy or they're scared to leave money on the table. The market's going up so fast. Pent up demand of people who want to list their properties. That's where the demand is right now. The pent up demand that's building. It's a bubble that's building every day. More and more and more and more. Every day somebody else new wakes up and says, man, I sure would like to upgrade or move but they can't, so they have to wait. And so that continues to add to the ever-growing pent-up demand and bubble of people who want to list their properties. As the market continues and something happens that pops the, the bubble of this surge of demand and low inventory, right? Every seller is going to recognize it at the same time, the same day, they're going to realize like either interest rates go up a quarter percent unexpectedly or whatever. I don't know what's going to happen, but something's going to happen. Maybe, maybe buyers just say, you know what? I'm not going to spend a million dollars on a $300,000 house. Okay. I'm done. We're just going to wait. I don't know what it's going to be, but whatever it's going to be is going to create a scenario where the market flattens out. Okay. When that, when the market does do that and the writing's on the wall there, every seller that has been waiting for the top or waiting for their opportunity, they're, they're all going to call their agent on the same day and say, sell it now. And we're going to have this surge of listings all of a sudden, which, which by the way, will get, will get eaten up immediately because when the market flattens out, that means that buyers took a step back. So we won't have as many buyers as we had the day before, but we'll still have a lot of buyers. Say we lose half the buyers. We still have half the buyers and those, those, the, the 50% of the same amount of buyers that are still there are going to eat up that inventory that's going to hit the market within a good 30, 60 day period. So what does that look like for real estate agents? When that moment happens, sellers are going to, our clients that know, like, and trust stuff that we've been building a brand with, that we've built relationships with, that want to do business with us. They're waiting for the perfect time. They're going to call us out of the blue and say, sell, sell, sell. We're going to list all these properties and we're still going to have these buyers in our pocket that have been missing out on deals. You wrote four offers for, they lost it to multiple situations. You're going to have those buyers still in your pocket. And now you're going to have all these listings in your pocket and you're going to be able to double in a lot of deals. Um, you know, there's just so much misconception on, you know, the expectations of success in real estate. And I think that's one of the biggest downfalls of failure in the industry is people come in with the wrong expectations and nobody really sets them up for the reality of the business, which could actually help them through their first couple years in the business. I, I tell everybody like it is, you know, when you come in, you're going to be on this emotional high where you're really excited about sky's the limit and you come in and you're just happy, excited, motivated, fired up and uh, you know probably more than you've ever been and you go through this phase and then you start to become a little frustrated because you realize there's a lot to learn in this business that you can't learn in one day. And there's this mountain of knowledge you're just not going to learn immediately. It's going to take time to learn it little by little. And a lot of it's learned through experience, which takes years. You know, so you're really excited. Then you become a little frustrated with, you know, the learning curve, right? And then comes the huge disappointment when you don't sell a property in the first three months, four months, something like that. You become very disappointed. You feel like, you know, I put in all this work, but I haven't even sold a single property. You know, I should have sold a property by now. Well, who's, who's to say that the effort that you put in equals a property sold? You know, why, why do you assume that that amount of effort equals a deal, right? Obviously it doesn't because it didn't happen. So the universe actually dictates.
It's also the gestation period. When you're not aware of what's going on, you're new in the business, you don't understand that the work you're doing today is really gonna come to fruition you know, down the road. You're laying that. That's thing. another thing that I try to set the expectations for, that all these seeds you're planting is gonna happen. Well, as a new agent, okay, as a new agent, it's like, once you get to that, that, that disappointment stage, some people quit right there. But, but the winners look around and say, okay, this is not as easy as I thought, but I can do this. So they become excited again. They go through the whole thing, disappointed, you know, frustrated, excited. They, 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 that's how your first year goes, right? A lot of emotional ups and downs. But what people really don't think about is the bigger picture of the fact that you're really working for two, three years out. That first year, okay, you actually make millions of dollars. You learn how to write a contract. That's worth a million dollars right there to you over the life of your career. You learn how to work MLS. There's another million, right? You learn how to you know, look up property owners and call people, right? Another million. You learn how to, you maybe you did three deals, okay? So you learn the process of, the tra of a transaction. That's worth a million dollars, gotta be. Right, so we're talking about four, five, six million dollars that you really made that year. It's just not on your tax returns. People are only looking at tax returns, and I'm like, wait a minute, that's like not even, you know, that's so far away from, you know, what you actually accomplished. You know, it's just not even funny, but that's the only thing they look at, and I'm like, well, in 2024, you're not going to care what you made in 2021. All right, you're only going to care what you make in 2024, but you know the amount of money you make in 2024 is going to be predicated on what you do this year to build your business in terms of how many people you talk to, right? To create friends in the market, right? And then build your brand on the back of the data you collect from those people. Everybody loves a hard worker, okay? Right? And not only, and let me take it a step further. Not only does everyone love a hard worker, which what that's what makes you different. Oh, Ricky, everybody can work hard. Yeah, no, everybody can say that they work hard. Very few people actually work hard. What I'm saying is, is working hard when nobody's looking, like I've been doing for the last 20 years. Nobody has to tell me to, 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 to grind it out 10 years ago when there was no Red X, there was no dialer, you know, looking up addresses, copying and pasting in Spokio and whitepages.com to find 100 numbers. It took me eight hours, <laughs> like to find 100 numbers and another eight hours to call them with my hand, right? Nobody had to tell me to do that. Nobody was watching me over my shoulder. Everybody knew I was doing that kind of stuff. Why? Because when I called them, they knew I had to look up their number on whitepages.com to find them, right? And, and now they're like, wow, this guy's out here really getting after it. People look at you a lot differently, man, when people know that you're working hard behind the scenes and that's what's gonna separate you. So taking it a step further, when you, when you do become and merge as this person that people recognize as a hard worker, all right, now then if you can stack your intentions, if you can stack your intentions on top of being not only a hard worker, but also caring about exactly what they have going on and being empathetic towards their situation, right? Empathy, right? Empathy, the, your biggest tool is to listen, right? To listen to what they have going on, right? That's the biggest toolbox. It's literally putting yourself in their shoes right, of why they're buying or selling a piece of property. You understand what I'm saying? Like, let's, let's go deeper with this. For me, it's not about marketing and how we can do the best marketing. I like what Juan said, because if you show them a video, if you show them this resume, if you're, if you're doing all these extra little things, what is that doing, right? It's showing them that you're a hard worker. That's what I like about what Juan just said. Not necessarily, you know, the actual items of value that he's giving, it's the effort behind the, the items of value that he's giving that I'm interested in, that's showing them that you're a hard worker. See what I'm saying? So understand the depth of it. It's not the resume that's gonna get them. It's not the video that's gonna get them. It's the effort that you put into those items is what's gonna get them.